today good time to sleep to take a part in the second international webinar series organized by Faculty of Sport Science UNES. I am Lukman as your moderator will guide this remarkable session entitled Immune Boosting During Stay at Home. Before beginning with the webinar, let us to heed the welcoming speech from Vice Dean for Students Affairs of Faculty of Sport Science Universitas Negeri Semarang. Dr. Andre, the screen is yours. Thank you, Mr. Lukman. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum Ladies and gentlemen, uh, for the honorable, our invited speaker, Dr. Mahalul Azam, lecturer of sports science faculty, student international and national participants, and all viewers. Uh, I am Andrea Hiroyanto, acting as the vice dean of student fire. Uh, would like to welcome you to our second webinar series on sport, physical education and health. Uh, organized class sport science faculty, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Uh, this is the four days in our second uh, series and the active lecture of the week. Uh, we are very thankful for your continuous uh, participation in our webinar. We also thanks uh, we also thanks to the committee who have worked really hard to prepare prepare the event. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, today uh, Dr. Mahalul Azam will deliver his material on his expertise and I hope you all will learn something from his speech. Lastly, please enjoy uh, the lectures and may you get fruitful knowledge and experience. Thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. We say thank you to Dr. Andre for the welcoming speech and well, we move on to the next program. Before going to main event, let me you to show the rule of the participants during the webinar and please pay attention to the rule because it is related to the e-certificate requested. Please Pay attention, I will share some PowerPoint. Uh, rule for participants. Number one, please turn on your camera and turn off your microphone. And number two, do not sleep during the webinar, for sure, because this time is suitable time for uh, sleep. Number three is question can be asked by chat menu. I can... I will filter or I will choose some or two or three questions that you state on the menu, on the chat menu. And number four, please make a summary from this webinar and please capture the screen of the webinar from Zoom or from YouTube and circle your face on the screen capture if you join Zoom meeting. This rule, number four and number five, is related to the filling form that you have to upload because in that filling form, you have to upload to the requirements, summary and capture of the screen of this webinar. If you want to request the e-certificate. And number six, do not forget to subscribe YouTube channel, Vic UNES Semarang Official and Produk Kesehatan Masyarakat UNES. Don't forget to ring the bell like the YouTuber. Number seven is in the end of the webinar, it will be informed the URL of e-certificate request. So do not leave the Zoom. If you have already done filling the URL certificate, the certificate will automatically send to your email address. And number eight, the link, the link of URL of certificate is active for only 60 minutes 
after this webinar will offer. So do not sleep and keep pay attention to the this webinar. And now it is the main program with the topic of immune boosting during stay at home. It will be delivered by Associate Professor Malul Azam, medical doctor, for 30 minutes. I will read the briefly curriculum vitae. Associate Professor Dr. Mahalul Azam is a lecturer from Public Health Department, Universitas Negeri Semarang, and he is also a senior consultant in Central Java Indonesia Spot Committee, and he has also many scientific papers and projects either presented or published. And he is nationally recognized expert in many areas like sport, epidemiology, and health related subject. And he active involved in some professional activities such as Ikatan Dokter Indonesia, Ikatan Ahli Kesehatan Masyarakat Indonesia, Perhimpunan Pembina Kesehatan Olahraga Indonesia, Perhimpunan Ahli Epidemiologi, and some others. As you all know, Dr. Azam also has a position as Vice Dean for Academic Affairs in Faculty of Sport Science, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Azam to deliver the topic. Dr. Azam, the screen is yours. Thank you, Pak Lukman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, thank you also, Pak uh, Andri and uh, I saw Bu Birta and Bu Galo and all of the participants. Uh, okay, I will try to slide share first. Is it uh, exist in your screen? Okay. Uh, today we discuss a uh, request of the moderator: immune boosting during stay at home or uh, facing COVID-19. Yeah, in this afternoon. Pak Lukman says that it's a uh, time to get sleep. Yeah, <laughs> actually, sleep uh, is one of uh, the activities that boosting our immune as well. Okay, uh, in this uh, discussion, uh, we have discussionary outcome. Firstly, uh, demonstrate knowledge of immune system briefly. And then we will demonstrate uh, the context of immune system during stay at home. Uh, maybe in certain circumstances, uh, we related to the stay at home, but in other circumstances, uh, it's a general, not always related to stay at home. And uh, especially in facing the COVID-19 infection. And the next uh, learning outcome is demonstrate how the, to enhance the immunity and demonstrate the condition that influence the immunity. Actually, it's very wide uh, topic to be discussed. So a little bit uh, confused uh, which one will uh, I start for the discussion. Okay, we first discuss about the immune system briefly. Uh, we know that uh, our immune system is divided into two uh, major divisions, that is uh, innate immunity and adaptive immunity. Innate immunity, uh, previously we know as natural or general immunity, and then adaptive immunity, also known as acquired or specific immunity. And this is the differentiation between uh, innate and adaptive immunity, maybe the most important thing that adaptive immunity has a memory while the innate immunity is not. And we continue the adaptive immunity itself consists of humoral immunity and cell mediated immunity. And this is the role of uh, this uh, component of its uh, humoral and cell mediated immunity. You can find out uh, more maybe. 
And uh, this is the immune component uh, totally. And this is uh, the picture of a structure of antigen. And this picture describes regarding the active immunity and passive immunity. This picture describes the specificity, memory, and self-limitation of immune response. Uh, unfortunately, I can uh, discuss more about this. And this is uh, the effector function of certain B lymphocyte cell. This is the function of neutralization, activation of macrophage, inflammation, killing cell, etc. And then this is the phases of adaptive immune response begin in the recognition phase, activation phase, effector phase, and, and then destruction of the antigen and then memory. This is the uh, role of each uh, component uh, while uh, this is the uh, phase of each uh, step. And what uh, happened after uh, in final to destruction the uh, antigen or the virus on the microbes on the enemy of our body is uh, this is effect, effector function, the function of antibodies and then uh, not just antibodies and maybe a cell mediated as well. This is uh, good to neutralization, optimization, lysis and engulfing eating etc. And this is the adaptive immune response to extracellular microbes. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, this is uh, very complex. Maybe it, it's a comparison in this slide. Uh, we, uh, we saw the military system, our military system. Yeah, I uh, mount this uh, picture here. But in, the, in the reality, there is so many uh, complicated uh, system. But uh, in this picture as also show us uh, how uh, complicated the military system to defend our country, as well as uh, our immune system in our body that uh, previously I saw the slide before. And what is the summary of this uh, part of immune system? Immune system are complex system involve the role of white blood cell and other component uh, like neutrophil, macrophag, and then natural killer, yeah, and then lymphocyte molecule component, protein, inflammatory mediator, interferon, tumor necrotizing factor, cytokine, interleukin, etc. It is uh, categorized as innate immunity and adaptive immunity, and the adaptive immunity itself consists of humoral immunity and cell-mediated immunity. They work uh, in the uh, final effector uh, function is neutralization, opsonization, and then phagocytosis or activate macrophage to engulfing or to eating and destroying the pathogen, the microbe, the uh, other enemy for our bodies. Yeah, I think uh, this is the brief uh, uh, knowledge about uh, immune system and actually maybe uh, it's uh, discussed widely in your uh, lecture. And we continue to immune respond to SARS-CoV-2 infection and the COVID-19 or coronavirus disease 19 infection uh, caused by, we call the virus is SARS-CoV-2, Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, coronavirus type two. Uh, we know that uh, previously uh, type one and the characteristic of this uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection, uh, this uh, virus belong to family coronaviridae of the nidoviridus order. And the incubation period of SARS-CoV-2 was three until seven days. And approximately 80% of the infection are mild or even asymptomatic. So not uh, all of people that uh, infected by SARS-CoV-2 have a symptom, have the uh, sign and symptom, but just 20%, uh, 20% uh, have a uh, symptom that 15% uh, are safer, requiring oxygen, and 
five percent are critical infection requiring ventilation and maybe uh, have a fatality rate. So that uh, the fatality rate is uh, between three eight eight, eight percent. Yes. And the common symptom is uh, fever, cough, and fatigue. And the most important thing of the immune response to such COVID infection is that uh, there is cytokine storm or cytokine release syndrome that uh, play a pivotal role to the major factor in the pathogenesis of COVID-19. Uh, Okay, uh, actually, of course, the response of our body uh, stimulate uh, after the infection of SARS-CoV-2, there is a humoral immune response as well as cell-mediated immune response. Okay, and this picture maybe uh, describe the condition of infection of SARS-CoV-2 infection. This is uh, described the coronavirus and this describe the alveoli or air sac that uh, mean the parent time of the of our lungs. This is normal, normal alveoli. And this picture describes the abnormal or the pathogen or the condition of pneumonia caused by SARS-CoV-2. Uh, we call that this condition influenced by cytokine storm or CRS, or cytokine release syndrome. This uh, tissue, uh, very, very, what is it? Uh, large, large amount of the inflammatory component, pro inflammatory, and uh, so many cell mediated that involved in the inflammation. Maybe uh, previously I didn't explain that uh, in our in our immune response, uh, it's needed to be appropriate appropriate uh, condition or appropriate uh, balance. If there is a more inflammatory, more inflammatory uh, response, it's uh, also uh, harmful to our body, especially in this condition to our alveoli. And this call is uh, a cytokine storm. There is so many uh, cytokines, so many cell mediator, uh, component mediator. Or if I describe this condition like a battle, battle uh, in our military. Yeah, battle uh, always distract not just the enemy, but uh, distract the condition of uh, the the cell that uh, functional for our metabolism. In this case, is uh, alveoli in this uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection. So the distraction of uh, alveoli is. Uh, caused by the pro-inflammatory cytokine, uh, one of them is interferon, PNF, etc. Yeah, this is, uh, we described the fatal condition uh, like uh, our military and destruct uh, another another uh, food component or not, not just enemy. And this uh, described the mind weapon or uh, what is a, uh, uh, Ranjo, yeah, what uh, mines weapon that also uh, can uh, harm and can kill uh, our our uh, not just enemy. Okay, uh, what uh, the take home message from uh, this discussion uh, in the uh, immune response in SARS-CoV-2 is further study uh, must be concluded to elucidate well regarding uh, immune response to SARS-CoV-2 infection. And the immune response mechanism in SARS-CoV-2 infection will guide us in the treatment policy and prevention policy. In treatment policy, uh, we know that uh, there is some research that use of antiviral regimen, remdesivir, uh, that uh, US uh, research uh, go 
forward to find out about the role of remdesivir to uh, cure or to treat uh, the SARS-CoV-2 infection patient. And then the use of anti-inflammatory steroid. Uh, previously, we uh, tell you that the uh, anti-inflammation anti must be uh, limit uh, must be limit to uh, minimize the destruction and the use of convalescent plasma transfusion it's uh, uh, the use of plasma of patient that uh, recover from the covid-19 and the plasma have the antibodies so and the antibody uh, can be used to other patient and this uh, immune response also uh, keep up the prevention policy policy uh, that is uh, we uh, develop the use of vaccine uh, this is the good news that Aikman our laboratory Aikman a uh, national laboratory will release the vaccine maybe in uh, by, the, by the end of this year and maybe in the US in the Europe uh, even in July will uh, deliver the or will uh, distribute the vaccine that uh, use uh, by inhalation, inhalation uh, vaccine. And uh, also we must uh, know about the response of immunity in SARS-CoV-2 infection to uh, Im uh, immune status identification and also immune boosting that we'll uh, discuss today. Okay, this is uh, the pillar of immunity in, uh, boosting or enhancement. Uh, firstly, we discuss about the proper diet. Yeah, uh, maybe you will discuss well uh, with uh, Bugalo because uh, this is the uh, class of macronutrient diet and then get adequate uh, sleep so Pak uh, Lukman moderator uh, if uh, the today's forbidden uh, right now forbidden to sleep uh, it's uh, will minimize our uh, immune as well <laughs> and then number three pillar number three is minimize stress or adequate stress management regular exercise and physical activities avoid smoking pollution and al alcohol consumption, and then identify your immune status and take step to avoid infection. At least uh, uh, we think this is the, the seventh pillar of uh, boosting our immunity. The first pillar is uh, adequate diet. We know that uh, nutrition is a critical determinant of immune responses and malnutrition is the most common cause of immunodeficiency worldwide. So that the uh, proper intake of macro and micronutrient is mandatory to uh, be the immunocompetent. And the uh, highlight may be uh, enough fruit and vegetable in our diet. And uh, actually we have a uh, uh, pedoman kisi seimbang in our uh, national program. Uh, our balanced diet guideline that the first is consume variety of food yeah because we know there is no single food that can provide all the nutrient we need and then number two is personal hygiene regular physical activity and then uh, keep the uh, body uh, ideal weight in ideal weight and uh, beside that uh, there is that general message for daily diet in the policy of pedoman uh, seimbang. Number one is be grateful and enjoy the variety of food, and then eat a lot of fruit and vegetables, consume high protein meal, consume variety of stable food, limit sweets, uh, salty and fatty food, and then regular physical activity, and maintain ideal body weight, wash hand with soap and clean running water, have breakfast regularly and drink sufficient water and check the food label this is the message from uh, balanced diet uh, guidelines and regarding the 
function of uh, nutrition to enhance our immunity. Yeah, actually, we need uh, protein and polyunsaturated uh, fatty acid. That's a uh, function to the in it and put adaptive immunity as well as in the uh, PUFA function. And we also need the vitamin and trace element. Uh, this table shows us that the, the this vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin R, vitamin E, vitamin B6, etc. Uh, and the detail function in innate immunity and adaptive immunity. There is so many function uh, of this uh, micronutrient in uh, the role of innate immunity and adaptive immunity, as well as the folate, zinc, iron, copper, and other trace element also have the many function in uh, innate and adaptive immunity. And this is the slide. Uh, so at the condition of uh, deficiency of vitamins uh, and trace element deficiency, increase oxidative damage, etc. And this slide, this table, guide us the recommended dietary allowance and tolerable intake level. You can see detail in the Permenkes number 28 tahun 2019. All of our daily uh, dietary requirement is described there. And actually, uh, what is the take home message of this uh, description is how to calculate our daily diet. Actually, we confer from the recommended uh, daily requirement as uh, published in our uh, Parmenkes to convert to the household measurement, angka uh, kecukupan harian to the ukuran rumah tangga, household measurement. And also, we alternatively, we can use uh, easily the free application, uh, national application or worldwide national. Uh, I can uh, give this example is my fitness pal yeah uh, yeah this is the sample of my fitness pal to use your gadget use your android or use your uh, computer uh, download the application and then input uh, all of our diet of our uh, food intake uh, in every uh, meal that we consume yeah i Give the example is uh, even nasi pecel exercise that is uh, exists in this uh, application, and then uh, there is so many function. Uh, I just saw the brief uh, function that related to calculate our diet or daily diet in the macronutrient and as well as in micronutrient, potassium, vitamin E, etc., etc. If uh, if our need is lack then the requirement the system will warning uh, will warn our, our uh, condition in this application this is one of the, the sample uh, continue to the issues on nutrition and immunity uh, we often discuss about obesity and immunity stress oxidative antioxidant and immunity vitamin d and sun beating Fasting and immunity. This is maybe the most uh, favorite issues on the nutrition and immunity. We know that obesity finally will uh, impact to the impaired immunity. Yeah, because uh, it's related to the condition of the metabolic syndrome and then the pro-inflammatory liposide phenotype and chronic disease, etc. And then, uh, and finally, will uh, in the end, target is impaired immunity. And uh, how about the stress oxidative? And stress oxidative, antioxidant and immunity, uh, and the immunity. Antioxidant and immunity, we know that uh, previously discussed that stress oxidative is byproduct of inflammation. Uh, maybe uh, in the our term is uh, we call a free radical. 
or if compare with the military system, uh, I choose the condition of uh, Ranjo of mines weapon. This is the other negative side effect of inflammation. Like uh, I said before, that uh, what happened in cytokine storm is there is so many free radical, so many mediator, so many destruction of cell membrane, etc., uh, etc., et and then. Uh, it's become the free radical that uh, uh, like a storm. And what is the function of antioxidant? Antioxidant will neutralize the free radical. So it's a neutralizer. It's like uh, in our military system, uh, jihandak or a bomb neutralizer. Yeah, bomb neutralizer. It's like uh, the function of uh, antioxidant uh, in the high antioxidant diet, uh, we need the vitamin C, vitamin E, micronutrients, zinc, copper, etc. And then it's uh, much uh, in fruit and vegetables and other components like xanthin. Uh, we know uh, echinacea or uh, Garcinia mangustana. Echinacea uh, in, in Indonesia term is pohon meniran, uh, Garcinia, fruit uh, manggis, etc. It's much uh, content of xanthin that very high uh, antioxidant activities and maybe in this uh, picture shows us uh, detail about uh, the free radical or stress oxidative oxidative stress is uh, the condition of uh, there is so many free radical this uh, picture uh, is a normal oxygen uh, we know that uh, oxygen uh, symbol is O2, and this is the stable, the anion and the electron and the proton is uh, connected. So it is stable and not harmful to our tissue, to our body. And how about the oxygen uh, chains become superoxide anion or peroxide, hydroxyl, etc. This, the red one is uh, not uh, connected or not uh, stable with the other electron. So this is the harmful. This is uh, harmful to our tissue, to our cell, unpaired electron. We call this condition is reactive oxygen species. Um, the much more reactive oxygen species, the much more damage that uh, will make to our tissue, to our body. And this uh, condition is the antioxidant. Antioxidant will make a donation, electron donation, so that the unpaired electron will be catch and will be stabilized by the antioxidant activities. And the reactive oxygen, reactive uh, oxygen species, and the free radical uh, become not harmful anymore after it's catched by the antioxidant activities. Okay, we continue to the next issue on nutrition, vitamin D and sun beating. Vitamin D play a pivotal role in the prevention of respiratory tract infection. And we know that pandemic vitamin D deficiency is 50% population in the world, even in the sunniest area of the world, like Indonesia, like uh, we are in the tropical area, but uh, there is uh, this number uh, 45 uh, actually the research in Indonesia 45 population is at risk to the vitamin D deficiency because uh, we are not appreciate we are not uh, aware about the function of uh, sun bathing. The take home message is sun bathing for 10 to 15 minutes at 8 to 10 a.m. or 3 until 4 p.m. and avoid 10 to 2, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at least uh, three times weekly. This is the recommendation. Just 10 to 15, uh, 15 minutes uh, expose our body to the sunshine and expose uh, your body surface as wide as possible. Uh, the key is the more surface exposed, the more vitamin D will be got uh, okay yeah, and this condition is uh, maybe related to stay at home yeah 
but uh, stay at home didn't restrict uh, uh, sun bathing. Yeah, you can take uh, 10 to 15 minutes to uh, sun bathing. And this uh, picture shows us the yeah, this complicated complicated uh, process. But uh, what is the important thing is that precursor of vitamin D or uh, pro vitamin D is not working uh, without the role of the sun siding. And uh, how about the fasting? Yeah, I, I think uh, this is the important issue as well. Fasting and immunity, uh, we know that in Indonesia and that uh, most uh, population is uh, Muslim and we just uh, pass uh, the Ramadan. And uh, based on the Ramadan fasting study that uh, the fasting is modulate immune activity. This increased pro-inflammatory cytokine and also as well an immune cell and increased antioxidant activity as well, increase total antioxidant capacity and decrease total oxygen status and oxidative stress index. So the fasting uh, based on the Ramadan study is very use, uh, very boost our boosting our immunity. And the second pillar is uh, take adequate sleeping. Yeah, I hope uh, you are not sleeping now because this is uh, time suitable to sleep, like a moderator says, but Lukman says. Yeah, the take home message is sleeping time is seven until eight hours for adult. And beside the quantity, we must also get the well quality sleeping. Uh, so that uh, how we know that the, our sleeping is quality, we can assess, uh, assess your sleeping quality by the Pittsburgh Sleeping Quality Index. We can find out uh, here there is a, a questionnaire, self questionnaire answer. There is a seven component and total score of five or greater indicates uh, the sleeping disorder. Uh, this picture shows us the mechanism of the lack of sleeping quality or sleeping disturbance harm our immunity. This is. Uh, uh, related to the C-reactive protein inflammation, and then pro-inflammatory cytokine, uh, etc. And the third pillar is minimize stress or adequate stress management. We know that uh, in the term of stress, we discuss about uh, depression and anxiety and stress. We have uh, Puberta here. Uh, Puberta may be at some more explanation regarding this condition. And uh, in general, uh, to minimize uh, the stress, maybe it's a very complicated, uh, much more, you know, moreover in this condition, in stay at home condition, in uh, COVID infection condition, this is a, a stressor and it stimulate uh, our stress. But in general, uh, spiritual approach by praying, meditation, telling your problem to someone you trust, sport and hobbies activities, do your present life easily, move on from your previous life, avoid anxiety, do proper thing based on knowledge, and do not overreactive of everything, include in uh, COVID-19. This is the um, general uh, to minimize the uh, stressor or to manage our stress. And actually we have uh, the self-assessment as well, the depression and CD stress scale, uh, uh, depression and CD stress scale. Uh, we can find out in the this, this uh, site, this URL. And we will uh, have 42 question items. And this is the interpretation of the depression condition, anxiety and stress, while it's a normal in this range, mild in this range, moderate in this range, and the severe and very severe in this range. You can find out uh, more because uh, very limited time, so I can uh, uh, discuss more about this. And this condition is uh, how the stressor 
make uh, our immune uh, depressed because again uh, the role of cytokine uh, regarding to the at home stress yes there is uh, uh, some tips uh, to manage our stress the engine in the healthy activities and happy that reduce stress yeah positive thinking maybe uh, reading holy quran uh, people etc and extra time to in uh, your daily schedule for stress relief and self-care especially a movie hearing music etc be sure to create and maintain a routine in for working and learning time yeah i think it's uh, easy to say but maybe uh, hard to practice yeah because uh, student learning maybe uh, must um uh, uh make a uh, suitable with uh, his uh, her lecturer and then maintain communication especially to someone you love and don't forget to be kind and compassionate to others make little changes in your room in your home and then avoid long time exposure of computer screen or cell phone and and then sport and physical activities as well yeah, i think it's very uh, uh make a complete one to another that the sport activities uh, nutrient stress is a very uh support one another and then the most important thing is vitamin d supplementation or back to the sun beating supplementation i think uh, uh as we live in the tropical area is not needed we know that vitamin d is a very important <clears throat> vitamin that uh, influence the stress condition we know the term winter depression in the europe in the subtropical region because uh, not uh, excess of the sun rise sun shining and even they they make uh, the sun shine uh, virtually yeah there is uh, the surface to get the artificial or virtual sun shining this is vitamin d is uh, also needed to minimize or uh, to minimize the stress and then the pillar number four is exercise uh, who recommended the sport and physical activities to the adult is uh, should be at least 150 minutes in moderate <coughs> moderate <coughs> intensity and at least 30 minutes a day for five or more days and the moderate intensity is uh, we know or we calculate by the heart rate the heart rate uh, range the heart our uh, exercise heart rate exercise is 50 to 70 is called the moderate intensity and then 70 until 85 is uh, vigorous intensity but in the exercise for enhance uh, our immune must be moderate intensity that is uh, in the range of 50 until 70 percent of maximum heart rate uh, we must term this uh, condition that uh, heart rate maximum heart rate maximum in common people is uh, counted with uh, 220 minus our age this is the maximum heart rate uh, but in athlete or well-trained person, uh, it must be adjusted by an other condition that is uh, resting heart rate. So the uh, well-trained person or an athlete uh, must must be calculated with other uh, formula. It's called a, a current formula. That's uh, called the percentage of heart rate reserve. Uh, this is the example. If our age is 20, the heart rate maximum is uh, 220 minus 20 uh, it's been 200 and what is the rate is uh, if the heart rate exercise uh, heart rate exercise is a heart rate that calculate uh, during your activities during your exercise uh, in the sample we calculate that uh, the heart rate exercise is 160 uh, how about the calculate? Your calculate uh, can be manually 
or can be used the uh, gadget like smartwatch, etc., etc., heart rate monitor, yeah, this uh, the instrument. Uh, but if you don't have uh, the instrument, you can calculate by uh, manual with uh, the calculate in your uh, pulse of uh, brachial brachial uh, heart rate. And uh, with the number of 160, the percent of heart rate maximum is 80% based on the calculation of heart rate exercise divided by heart rate maximum. And how about the athlete or well-trained? If well-trained, uh, the number of uh, 160, and we calculate with this formula, heart rate exercise minus heart rate rest, divided by heart rate maximal minus heart rate rest, the calculation will be 70%. This is the target soon. This is the target soon of uh, that uh, if we target the 50 to 70, that will imbus, uh, uh, will boost our immune. Uh, this, uh, uh, if the ordinary people or common people, the heart rate 160 is uh, uh, offer of our target in uh, immune boosting, while the athlete in this condition is uh, in the maximum target. So we adjust this uh, heart rate under the 70% of target zone. Uh, this uh, condition uh, that exercise effect in our immunity. I think it's similarly. And the uh, most important thing is that uh, potential factor that uh, may be involved in exercise induced immune depression that we uh, prohibit to do the high intensity exercise. And then uh, high intensity exercise is determined if the exercise is more than 70%, especially more than uh, vigorous uh, target zone. And then prolonged strenuous exercise. Prolonged exercise is not well as well. And then training with non-adequate nutrition. Training with non-adequate nutrition uh, also harm of our immunity. And other activities that cause immune depression yeah, in uh, the previous session. And um, the most important thing also the research, uh, the study also tell us that uh, the exercise in the night uh, especially in the next of our sleep uh, time, it's not good as well because it's a stimulate oxidative stress as well. And this is the harmful aspect of the uh, exercise in our immunity. So uh, yeah, keep physically active while stay at home or if you go to uh, outside, yeah, we use mask, but you mask, uh, you uh, face mask must be used uh, wisely because uh, there is so many uh, accident after using mask after uh, because of the lack of oxygen. And uh, technically, we can you can uh, access this link. This is the, our previous uh, webinar about the physical activity during stay at home by other uh, presenter. Okay, uh, we'll continue to the fifth pillar. Uh, avoid smoking, alcohol, and air pollution. Smoking air pollution, uh, maybe this uh, simulate the uh, nicotine, reactive oxygen species, and free radical. This condition uh, harmful to our innate immunity and adaptive immunity as well. So uh, this uh, very uh, much influence of the uh, smoking to the cell mediated and also as well uh, the humoral immunity. This alcohol uh, influence to the our immune system especially in the lung, this, uh, this is the pathogen associated molecular pattern is uh, very 
important as well in the COVID-19 infection. And uh, the next uh, step, the next pillar is identify your immune status. Number one is recognize uh, our characteristic, our age, our uh, sex, etc. And then recognize any related disease, maybe uh, recognize any family history of diseases, recognize previous history of diseases, uh, especially in autoimmune diseases. Arthritis rheumatoid, systemic lupus, lupus erythematosus, psoriasis, yeah, etc. And if needed, the uh, further laboratory tests uh, to identify the risk of certain disease. Maybe, maybe uh, can be, maybe can be uh, conducted. And uh, what is the laboratory? The total antioxidant status. Uh, to know our our uh, antioxidant status, inflammatory status, and then carcinoma risk detection. This is a genomic test to know the uh, breast, colorectal, etc. Diabetic risk detection. It is also uh, the genomic test as well. Diabetic, obesity, neuro and nephropathy, and then nutrigenomic and nutrigenetic tests uh, also uh, can be conducted. Maybe Bukalo will. Uh, sell another opinion in this area. And then uh, immune risk, uh, it's uh, previously told that uh, arthritis rheumatoid, etc., etc., also can be detected by laboratories. But not uh, all people uh, test the laboratory, but just uh, people with uh, high risk. Uh, this uh, condition is uh, depressed the immune system. Uh, this related to the AIDS, to the cancer, and the use of immunosuppression, diabetes, and then other chronic degenerative diseases, smoking, yeah, alcohol, obesity, and autoimmune uh, diseases. And the last uh, pillar is take step to avoid infection. I think this is uh, the our com campaign to was was. Uh, our hand with soap and the running water before, during, after preparing food, before eating food. Yeah, and yeah, I think it's uh, very well understood to us. And then physical distancing, and then uh, use face mask, etc. And especially in the COVID-19, we must uh, uh, wash hand after a public. Uh, place and touch other thing, uh, door handle, etc. Yeah, before touching our eyes, nose, and mouth, because uh, this is uh, the way of the germ uh, input to our bodies. And uh, I think recently WHO uh, uh, want us to use the surgical mask, uh, face mask, to the people at uh, more than not just uh, to the health healthcare uh, personnel, especially in the in the facility, in the health facility, and the high risk uh, place. Yeah, I think this uh, pillar is uh, reasonable because uh, how. Uh, how to to avoid the infection? How to avoid the pathogen input to our body? And uh, I think that's all. And the most important thing thing uh, we know that uh, right now we facing the new normal. But new normal didn't mean stay at home campaign stop. Yeah. So just yes, stay at home unless uh, this uh, very important thing outside. Okay. So keep. Be homey. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Alukman. Yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Check. Yeah. Thank you very much for informative and interesting lecture for <coughs> from Dr. Azam. I think that topic will provoke us to ask question and begin the discussion. And here, I notice four until five question from the participants, but. Before 
going the discussion, I want to say hello to Bu Heni, Raya is the chairperson, Rifan, and also Pak Mus with the master of the Zoom. Because without Pak Mus, everyone here cannot enter this meeting. And uh, as Pak Azam said that pillar of immune boosting, there are seven. First is proper diet, get adequate sleep, minimize stress, regular exercise, avoid smoking pollution and alcohol consumption, identify your immune status and take steps to avoid infection. There are some pillars that should be, should obey by people to uh, boost the immune. First question, I will read some question from the chat menu from Brother Rifan. Uh, Mr. Azam, I would like to ask about what the risk if we use masks, if we use facial coverings when we did sport activity. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Rukman and uh, Mas Rifan. Uh, using uh, face mask uh, during physical activities, yeah, we know that uh, in the condition without mask, also if we do the physical activities in the vigorous and uh, or more extreme, it's a uh, need the demand, it's uh, increase the demand of oxygen. And then uh, how about the use of mass? Use of mass is uh, limit our oxygen intake as well as also our carbon uh, dioxide exceed and it can be uh, inhaled, yeah, inhaled. So we need oxygen, but uh, the supply in our mass is uh, carbon dioxide. So we will uh, go to the hypoxia. Uh, hypoxia is very dangerous. Moreover, in the person with the previous uh, morbidity condition or comorbid, uh, we know that recently, uh, yeah, maybe in Semarang also, after uh, bicycling in uh, Gombel, yeah, and uh, fell down and also in Jakarta, in Monas, also there is a, a accident that uh, a person with uh, mass go cycling and fall. But uh, yeah, this is the, the extreme condition. But actually, in these two person, there is a, a previous condition, the comorbidity, comorbidity of the heart condition. But in general uh, practice, uh, I suggest that uh, if we uh, uh, do activities, do physical activities, do sport activities, it's not recommended to use uh, face masks. So maybe uh, if we go outdoor activities, face masks just use in the context of uh, transport to the uh, field, to the uh, community. But if uh, we activities, we, we uh, always uh, physical distancing and yeah, uh, as able to uh, put off our mess. Yes, I think that's all. Okay, thank you, Mr. Azam. Uh, continue with question from Suraya, not Suraya, but with Sa, Suraya, from nutrition students, asking about the uh, the duration, the duration of using masks for a long time, more than six hours. Is it dangerous for our health? that we use the max more than six hours? Oh yeah, of, of course. Uh, I think the recommended uh, time to use uh, face mask is uh, four hours. Four hours are uh, actually, it's depend on the condition of the mask itself. If it's going wet, because of our uh, uh, humidity in our breath, I think it's uh, harmful as well. Uh, 
the more time we use the mask, the more uh, infectious or pathogen of our ourselves, uh, our, uh, internal internal uh, breathing uh, exists in our mess. So it's harmful uh, because uh, the excess of the uh, germs in our mess. So the recommendation is uh, less than four hour. Uh, or yeah, and and the most important thing also how we uh, put off or we release our our face mask is must be careful because uh, if not be careful. It can be mode of transmission of the uh, microbe itself. I think that's all. Okay. Next question. The third question from Putri, Public Health Department. Good afternoon, Dr. Azam. My name is Putri. I want to ask some question. Last time in social media, I found popular information about immune boosting by rubbing, menggosok mungkin ya, rubbing the chest. To stimulate thymus, is it effective or not with or without essential oil? Uh, okay, thank you for the question. Actually, I didn't find any study to this uh, condition uh, because uh, in this in this uh, what is it? It is. Maybe I can see myths or maybe a hypothesis. In this hypothesis, uh, the chest, uh, chest brush, chest brushing, uh, stimulate the thymus. Yeah, we, we know that uh, thymus is an uh, important organ uh, to produce the lymphocyte. But uh, I think uh, there is a lack of uh, evidence lack of uh, study regarding this condition. Uh, I think the, the, the uh, established uh, knowledge uh, is uh, at least in, in some filler and maybe uh, much more, but uh, based on uh, evidence. I didn't uh, see uh, evidence in the uh, study uh, as far as uh, I know. Okay, thank you, Dr. Azam. Yeah. Move. To the next question from Dr. Titin. During Ramadan fasting and in the morning of, or afternoon, still do exercise. How is it? How is the immune status when we doing the exercise when Ramadan? And the second uh, is, what is suggestion for diabetes patient for doing good in exercise? Uh, the first question. Uh, thank you for the question. The first question is uh, regarding the exercise during fasting uh, in the morning and in the evening regarding the stimulate of uh, immune system. Actually, uh, fasting itself it uh, stimulate uh, the uh, immune system as well. Put the uh, Inflammatory, pro-inflammatory stimulate, and then uh, antioxidant stimulate. Uh, but uh, if our our condition is uh, uh, push or force uh, in the force condition, it's not better as well. Uh, actually, in the formula of immunity is the balance condition. The balance condition means uh, if there is pro-inflammatory dominant and then inflammation dominant it will harmful as well to our body so the uh, the most uh, important thing is the balance of our uh, immunity system this regarding the immunity and uh, the condition the second condition so the the, the recommendation is if uh, doing the physical activity during fasting it's it's uh, okay if uh, there is uh, not uh maybe the target zone of the exercise must be decreased we know that uh, the immune uh, system uh, we must under the 70% maybe in the if during during uh, fasting 
we don't get to maybe just sixty uh, percent of the target soon. And uh, uh, second condition, if we doing uh, the activities in the morning, it's uh, harmful to our body regarding the condition of dehydration. Uh, we know that uh, after fasting uh, if in the morning, uh, how about uh, if yeah we, we are so thirsty, etc. But in the evening, if the in the evening during fasting, it's near to the uh, what is it? Break uh, or break our fasting? Uh, I think it's okay, but uh, we must careful must be uh, careful as well to avoid the dehydration condition uh, in the evening. Uh, in the evening exercise, uh, also high risk uh, in dehydration because uh, a whole day we uh, can we cannot uh, we didn't get the adequate uh, drink to dehydration. Yeah. So in the regarding to the uh, immune system, it's uh, okay uh, during fasting and uh, exercise. But the most important thing is uh, don't be over training. Yeah, I think it's uh, uh, in all circumstances is uh, this condition is uh, relevant. And how about the diabetic mellitus uh, exercise? Exercise for diabetic mellitus, if not, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. Uh, after exercise for diabetes patient and after meal exercise for diabetes. Af oh, after meal exercise. Yeah. Uh, uh, we know uh, maybe we it is, it is very in general in general uh, there is uh, uh, general term as well uh, the exercise for diabetic but for diabetic maybe uh, we will found the broad spectrum condition of the patient diabetic patient with uh, complication diabetic patient just uh, with uh, uh, not normal uh, blood glucose etc uh, we must uh, 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 make approach uh, to the uh, patient with this uh, condition. If there is no complication, I think uh, uh, regular exercise and common exercise is okay as well to the uh, condition of diabetic. But if the limitation of maybe uh, we know that uh, diabetic maybe uh, the patient is uh, old and have another problem with uh, his health condition, maybe uh, with the extremity, with the uh, osteoarthritis, etc. the condition is must be adjust uh, anymore. But in the diabetes mellitus, without any complication, the recommendation for exercise is, uh, uh, the type of exercise is okay, but uh, we must also consider the target zone of the heart rate uh, of exercise. This is the most important thing is heart rate uh, exercise is must be considered as an important thing to manage the exercise program. And how about the after meal? After meal uh, uh, exercise for the diabetic, it is also well, we know that uh, diabetic, uh, we must uh, limit uh, carbohydrate, yeah, uh, and then uh, maybe simple uh, carbohydrate like glucose is very uh, like uh, sugar, it's uh, very avoid or uh, we can say prohibited. So the uh, this condition also uh, related to the after meal after exercise. Uh, we uh, must consider in overall the requirement of carbohydrate, uh, requirement of uh, protein and uh, fatty acid, etc. Yeah, so the limit the uh, sweet and sugar, but uh, in complex uh, glucose like uh, maybe. Uh, Bread or etc. is uh, okay. Okay, it yeah. means that uh, each person of diabetes patient different uh, doses of exercise, different exactly. size. 
Yes, exactly. But uh, in, the, in general, we consider the age, we consider other comorbidity, but in general, diabetes uh, patient with, without any other uh, complicated uh, condition is uh, it's like uh, in general. Okay, next question from Risma. She is from nutrition program. She asks about is the impact of lung disease from smoking can relate with lung disease from COVID-19? Oh, lung disease. Uh, lung, lung disease from smoking. Smoking. Related, it is related with, with lung COVID, disease. COVID-19. With COVID-19. Okay, exactly. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, uh, the uh, the condition uh, actually the COVID nineteen infection is uh, we call self limiting disease. This condition uh, will be okay uh, after the immune system is uh, handle this condition. But uh, what is the harmful condition is the destruction of the immune reaction. Yeah. So. Uh, the much, the more, the more uh, in our, our previous slide, uh, we call the cytokine storm. The cytokine storm is the what is it? Kambing uh, hitam, black, <laughs> black coat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, cytokine storm is uh, the most important role in uh, destruction of the lung parenchyme, parenchyme. Yeah, in the alveoli. So. Um, how about the previous smoker? Smoker, previous smoker uh, in our lung, in the uh, in the smoker lung, there is there are so many area in uh, in their lung is uh, damaged as well. It's not one hundred percent. Yeah, maybe fifty percent, sixty percent, and but it's not one hundred percent in the proper function. So uh, this condition make worse because. Uh, the survival patient is a, a patient who have uh, survived in lung function uh, after the cytokine storm uh, from the COVID-19. So it's very most related problem. Uh, Thank you. X, uh, beside the lung smoker also with hypertension people, right? Pazen. Yeah, right, right. Uh, hypertension as well. Uh, uh, discuss about hypertension. Uh, maybe I didn't uh, uh, share the slide. Hypertension uh, in this COVID-19 specificity, uh, in the special condition, that COVID-19 is like uh, is uh, SARS-CoV-2 have the receptor, uh, the antigen have. Uh, he very like the receptor, not very like, but just uh, click with the S S angio uh, angio converting enzyme inhibitor S inhibitor S inhibitor is uh, related to the condition of hypertension. Yeah, this is the genetic uh, the genetic of uh, hypertension is S inhibitor S inhibitor. Uh, if the uh, patient of or the people with uh, S inhibitor excess or more excess in his uh, body, uh, she or he will uh, easily get the COVID-19 because this is like a key and lock. Yeah, mm. Key without lock, it's not uh, a proper use. And the SARS-CoV-2 virus is the key and the lock is S inhibitor. S inhibitor is uh, the gen with the hypertension people. So in this condition, uh, we cannot uh, consider while the patient is a hypertension uh, control or uncontrolled. It's not uh, a big deal to SARS-CoV-2. SARS-CoV-2 uh, just find the S inhibitor in this person. So this is uh, discuss about the uh, receptor receptor of the SARS-CoV-2. Yeah, it's uh, I think uh, why hypertension. Uh, condition is uh, very special here. Okay, okay. Last question from the chat menu from Dinda. She is from 
student from nutrition. Uh, uh, interesting. Uh, what about your opinion, sir, about the stores th that provide some water and soap facilities in the front of the door before we enter the store? We have to clean our hand with the that facilities. Is it effective or even can transmit the COVID from other people? <laughs> nice question. Yeah. Firstly, firstly, this is uh, we discuss about campaign. Uh, we discuss about campaign. So the more facilities, the more uh, banner, the more information is uh, uh, the better for us. And uh, how about the providing the uh, washing facilities? Yeah, indeed, it is uh, can be can be mode of transmission as well. But uh, we must design actually this uh, washing machine or washing washing uh, facilities. Actually, must be minimized of uh, the transmission of the infection. Uh, we know that the most important uh, what most invest, uh, important part is the uh, handle. Uh, yeah, handle or, or crown, yeah, crown. Water handle. Yeah, the water uh, handle is uh, the most uh, infectious or the most uh, transmitted uh, part of the washing instrument. So uh, the if we consider this condition, uh, maybe we can design the washing uh, facilities by open and close by our uh, food. Yeah, so it's minimized the uh, condition of transmission. And uh, if there is uh, can be provided, we can also use the tissue. So we open the uh, handle by the tissue, and then we washing with uh, our hand, take another tissue, close and uh, clean uh, or dry our hand with uh, tissue. Yeah, I think uh, it's a it's a little bit uh, confused, but it's I think useful. I think it's 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 still useful, but yeah, the most important thing is how to to make our people to make our uh, yeah our people to understand well to uh, have the consciousness to the, uh, realize the, how important the uh, transmission of this uh, infection. Okay. Uh, also, we don't need when we are trying to washing our hand, we just uh, directly transmit from the the handle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There is no Fine. more question in the chat menu. I think finally we come to the end of the session. I would like to say thank you again to Dr. Azam for interesting talk and to all audiences here for the participation. And as a, in the name of the committee, I would like to say thank you of your uh, appreciation for Dr. Malul Azam as an invited yeah. speaker in the second webinar international series. And to all audience, to all audience here, faculty of sports science, Universitas Negeri Semarang, will organize international seminar on public health and education. You can join either as presenters or participants. If you join as participant, it is free of charge. You can join easily. You can visit this website on isphe.unes.ac.id. You can check further information on that website. And last but not least, it is Ah, it is the awaiting moment. E certificate request, you just filling the form in gg.gg slash immune, I M M U N E. Please, in that filling form, write your email address correctly because the e certificate will be sent to your email address and the link is active for only 60 minutes after this webinar is over.
and don't forget to write your summary and write uh, upload your your evidence that you join this meeting and do not forget to subscribe youtube channel at fik unes semarang official and at prodi kesehatan masyarakat unes and hopefully this webinar will be beneficial for everyone here thank you for dr azam and all audiences here see you then and assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.